close to the home of my parents in law there is a pond and of course this is a good opportunity to pick up some water samples. This uh, is uh, the water sample. Um, I also included a water plant and I think there are going to be plenty of microorganisms uh, growing on the plant. I think uh, that should do it. Time to pack up and uh, go back home to have a cup of coffee. Well, for me, microscopy is not only about uh, the laboratory work or the observing um, of specimens, uh, but it's also uh, um, about uh, observing nature, so that is uh, one of the things that I like about this hobby. Well, that was a pretty rapid jump from the pond directly into my lab. Um, the plant material is quite soft. Uh, this is probably because uh, it has already started to decay um, and I expect uh, plenty of uh, microorganisms growing on uh, these uh, leaves. A little bit of uh, water I have to add here and of course everything goes under the microscope. Oh wow! Well that is uh, something that I have not seen before, um, at least not in that amount. Uh, it's a whole colony um, of Vorticelle. <laughs> That's interesting. Vorticelle are ciliates, uh, they are stalked ciliates. Uh, they grow on a little stalk and uh, they retract very rapidly. As a matter of fact, so quickly that it's uh, impossible uh, to capture on camera. So you need a high speed camera to do that. Um, there are also plenty of other algae floating around. This is now a dark field uh, in which it looks uh, much nicer. Now you can also see that the leaf um, on the bottom part is, is actually green and the vorticelle, they appear white and yet a higher magnification algae, is, uh, filamentous algae in, in, in the middle. Um, the resolution is not quite, uh, quite well because it was difficult to focus um, because uh, there was quite a lot of water on, on the slide. Um, there were also other algae floating around in small colonies and if you look very carefully um, you should be able to say that uh, the, the cells have uh, little lines extending from them. These are flagellae and uh, they are used uh, for moving and uh, sometimes it was even possible to see them uh, a beat uh, and move. Um, they are green, so of course uh, they do photosynthesis. Yes, now you can see the flagella much better um, and uh, you can see that they're extending outwards and uh, that they're moving. Um, in a phase contrast microscope I think they would be much uh, easier uh, to see. Unfortunately um, I don't have a phase contrast microscope. And uh, another colony of several of them aggregated. Um, I don't know how they stick together. It uh, could be some kind of a gel. You, you almost can see that a little bit. So there seems to be a layer of gel, um, a gel-like layer around uh, the individual colonies um, that uh, makes them stick together. Also very nice in the background. You now can make a size comparison and you see again the vorticelle. Um, and you can also see that the, the vorticella, they also have cilia um, around uh, it's, uh, one part. This is, uh, yeah, this seems to be, uh, uh, I don't know if it uh, belongs to the genus Paramecium or not. Um, I think it's also a ciliate and uh, um, also here you can see the little hair on the surface uh, that are beating and moving. And uh, they are green um, because uh, they have actually also eaten some algae. 
Um, but if it's paramecium, if that is uh, the, were the case, um, then paramecium itself is actually not photosynthetic, um, but it's a heterotroph. Here now you see the small cilia quite well, um, and uh, because uh, the they're a little bit pressed flat because uh, they're squeezed between the slide and the cover glass. Um, and uh, this also makes it a little bit easier to see because they cannot uh, swim in and out of a focus just like uh, the other much smaller uh, microorganisms can do. Over here in the center right, uh, the object gliding uh, towards the bottom, that is a diatom. And they have a silica, um, they have a silica shell. This is stentor. It looks like a trumpet. It's also a ciliate. And uh, there are also some cilia um, on the right side. And you can see that uh, some of the debris and particles are um, sucked into the mouth um, of, of stentor. Now you can see the cilia quite well. They're beating quite rapidly. Um, here too, uh, I think it would be nice to have some kind of a high speed camera to be able to capture the movement. But I've also heard that maybe by adding a little bit of of, uh, um, of glycerin, or glycerol, um, then you should also be able to slow down the beating of the cilia as well. But I have not tried this uh, at a forty um, with a four x um, objective. Uh, here you see all of the algae floating around, um, quite a lot. And I caught a little water flea as well, um, and uh, I did not want to squash it with my cover glass, so I placed a cover glass left and right as a spacer, because the cover glass that I put now on top across should be uh, lifted up a little bit, because I did not want to squeeze uh, the little uh, the little crustacean, and uh, yeah, I added again a little bit of uh, some water, and uh, this uh, limited the movement uh, of the water flea, and the two large uh, dark uh, things extending uh, towards uh, the top uh, right, uh, these seem to be eggs. But I'm going to be switching to dark field right now because you see it much better this way. Yes, that's a dark field image, and now you can uh, see. Um, the the egg pouches maybe I think these are not two eggs maybe but there could be actually a, um, an accumulation of several eggs but I'm not quite sure about that yeah so that is uh, the view from from the side and this is a view from the top or from the bottom um, yeah um, the line on the left side that is the edge of the cover glass and uh, you can also actually see the movement of, of, of the organs inside this uh, crustacean. Crustaceans are little crabs and there are, I think I've read over 600 of these species and they move in a very jerking way. Um, on the right side you see maybe a little red dot, that is the eye spot um, of, uh, of the organism and uh, yeah, some of them uh, they have one eye spot uh, and they're able to sense light. Well let's uh, turn it off now. I think uh, this was a quite a nice uh, and uh, interesting uh, microscopy session. Uh, pond water is, of course, understandably one of the more favorite uh, samples uh, to be observed under the microscopes because there's simply so much life diversity uh, in, in a simple drop of water. But at the same time, I'd like to uh, tell you a little bit that um, it's maybe not the water itself that is so interesting, but rather the organisms that are growing on plant uh, material. Uh, because many of the organisms uh, they uh, they have to attach to a surface or they're using the, the plant uh, material as a, a source of food if they're decomposing it for example um, or they're simply attached uh, to the surface so that they're not washed away so um, if you want to uh, try some microscopy of pond water samples always uh, put a small amount of, of plant material um, take along always a small amount of plant material to to uh, observe under the microscope well, um, as always, I hope that you uh, enjoyed this video. Please uh, subscribe to the video if you liked it. And as always, I'd like to wish you a happy microscopy.